Happy Thursday. Today's video is going to answer another really frequently asked question or series of questions that I get a ton in my Instagram DMs and emails. And that's along the lines of what's your education? How do I do what you do? And how can I learn what you have learned? And how can I learn what you know? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jessica Ash and I am a functional nutritionist and just a general hormone nerd. I really love to dig into human physiology, specifically female physiology, and really teach you about your biology so you can take that information and apply it to your own life and actually learn how to improve your quality of life with it. It's so important to understand your cellular metabolism, but not everyone cares about the deep, deep science of it. So it's my joy and pleasure to take that science and put it into layman's terms so that you can actually use it and understand it and have it empower you. If you like what I teach about here, remember I have two courses, my mini course, Mend Your Cycle, and my full signature blueprint for restoring your metabolism and balancing your hormones using nutrition. It's called Fully Nourished. But with that being said, let's dive into the meat of today's video. Why you're here is what has been my journey to get to this point? And if I was going to give you tips for starting a career that's nourishing to your life, meaning that it allows you to have the life that you have always dreamed of, what tips would that be? So that's what I'm gonna cover in today's video. This is kind of, it started out as just me wanting to like give you guys some tips, but then I really realized that it's so important for people who are in my position, meaning that I'm nothing special. I just, I had a passion, I figured it out, I, you know, pulled myself up by my bootstraps and I did the thing and I'm still doing the thing. And I had to learn and make mistakes or learn lessons along the way. And I continue to learn lessons along the way. And so I'm by no means where I'm going to be. Everything is a journey, life is a journey, business is a journey. And I wish I had somebody <laughs> sitting down to tell me what I'm about to tell you in this video because there was a time in my life where I was exactly where you were. I didn't really know much about health or nutrition or my body. I knew I was interested in it. I knew I wanted to help people, but that was it. I didn't know where to start, where to begin. And I was under the foolish assumption that if I just went to the right schools and got the right certifications or did the right trainings, that I would be this all encompassing knowledgeable practitioner like the ones that I saw on social media or the ones that I saw really helping people, the ones that I really looked up to and aspired to be. And I wish somebody would have sat me down and said that wasn't the case. I felt, <laughs> I felt as I went through my own journey that I had been done an incredible disservice because a lot of people believe that when you go to school, you learn everything you need to know for a successful career and that's all <laughs> that's all you ever need to know but in reality school is really supposed to set you up to become a lifelong learner and it should be teaching you how to become a student of the career whatever career it is that you're pursuing and it should teach you how to learn and i don't really think like this might be an unpopular opinion, but I really don't think the school system as it is now sets us up for success in that way. And unfortunately, from my experience, the school system as it is today doesn't do this. And a lot of people are seriously convinced that your schooling and where you went to school is how you gain your expertise. And I think it's because schools cost so much money and people invest so much time and energy into them. And then they are so disappointed when they come out of school on the other end and they're not prepared to actually enter the career field and be an expert in the career field that they want to be. And this is of course not my fault, this is not your fault, this is actually the way that the system has been set up and I think it could definitely use some updating. But in the meantime, how do we navigate it? The first thing that I just wanna remind you is our schooling should be our foundation. It should be the foundation of our expertise and it should kind of springboard us into becoming a lifelong learner and a student of what we are going to be helping people with, right? And so for example, you know, I early on became a student of the human body. I knew that I needed to be a lifelong learner, a lifelong scientist, so, so to speak, or as you will. And this is not something that 
I knew when I was my 20 year old self or my 19 year old self. But this is something that as I look back, I realized that I, I think I started to realize it along the way, that it was my job to become a lifelong learner. And it was my job to become a continual student if I wanted to be successful in my career. And kind of stuck to the fact that scientists are simply people that make observations, look at research, form hypotheses or theories, right? And then they just test those hypotheses again and again, time after time. And doing research is actually just one part of that becoming a scientist equation. And a lot of people put so much stock into just the research nowadays that they forget to actually zoom out and look at the context and make sure that they really understand the context. And in my opinion, the greatest context is understanding your physiology and understanding your biology. And if you think that research is the only thing that is important and is all of the equation of being a scientist or a practitioner or a lifelong learner of the human body, then you will never be great or phenomenal at what you do. You will be mediocre, possibly good, but you will never be great and you will never be phenomenal. You will never make waves. Why is that? Because research is just one part of the equation. And I wanted to bring that up because I think some people think that your ability to read research is like the end all be all. And that's like a weird societal expectation that has really gained a lot of traction in the past like five to 10 years. Yeah, research is cool, research is important, but research is just one part of the equation and you have have to know the context that you're applying the research to. You also have to be able to make observations and form your own theories and then test those theories over and over and over again using that research and observations. So it's just a really important thing to understand. And if you are in this moment saying like, well, I could never do that. That's your first mistake. You need to say, I can do that. I can become a lifelong student. I can become a lifelong learner and I can dig and dig and dig if I don't understand something thing if there's something that is continually going over my head, instead of just accepting that, oh, I'll never be smart enough to learn that, you say, you know what? I'm gonna continue to dig and dig and dig and read and read and read and try to understand, do what I need to do to learn, understand the way that I learn and, and continue to try to learn about that topic until I do understand it. That's what I did. There's nothing that made me special except for that I believed that I could, so I did. Because this is how breakthroughs are made and this is how change is made in industries. Do you think that I started out my career thinking like, oh, I'm gonna start a whole niche within the health and wellness niche and I am going to be a trailblazer and I am going to set the nutrition world on fire, so to speak, and piss everybody off and you know help people see health from a completely different perspective that nobody was teaching before. Do you think I started my career off saying those things? No, I just put my head down. I learned biology, I learned physiology, and anything that did not make sense to me, anything that interested me, anything that made me go, hmm, that's interesting, anything that made me curious, I pursued it. I bought books on it. I went to the library and got as many books as I could on it. I looked for articles. I looked for research. I dug through random forums to see if there was anybody who maybe had some alternative research or alternative books or alternative articles that have been buried through time. I did the work and that's really what it is. It's work and it's also passion because these were things that I was interested in and I cared about. And I think that's important for me to say because if you look at me and you say, oh, I want the career that she has or I wanna really help people, you have to understand that there's dozens of moving parts behind what I do. It did not start with me starting a social media and you know, starting to work with people. This was years and years and years of me just learning and learning and learning and learning. And so if, if this is something that still interests you and you're, you've been listening to this video so far and you're like, wow, tell me more, tell me more. I wanna tell you six things that you need to know and that I have learned along my career journey. The first thing is that education is not everything. I already kind of <laughs> covered this a little bit, but I wanna dig deeper. So a lot of you guys ask me, where did you go to school? Where did you get your education? So the first thing that I really knew is if I wanted to start a successful business, that it was gonna be more about the knowledge that I had in my head. I often talk to you guys about how knowledge 
without wisdom is really useless and you know it's very important to view the body in context but it's also really important to see business in context business is also a skill and I knew that it was gonna be actually one of my biggest hurdles that I needed to overcome in my life um, if I wanted to do what I wanted to do and so I actually when I did my undergrad I got a business degree but that did not stop me from actually taking many of the classes that I would have needed to actually get a degree in biology. Um, I took many anatomy classes, physiology classes, and biology classes. I also took um, a lot of like organic chemistry type classes, um, microbiology, just those types of things, um, nutritional chemistry, and uh, there's actually a lot of resources on the internet now where you can take pretty much full-fledged university level classes. And I was, I didn't have like a too big of an ego to say like, oh, I need this to apply to my agree, degree. I obviously plugged in as many science classes as I could to apply to my business degree, but I actually took many that I you know, it didn't apply for, didn't actually apply as credit. It was simply because I knew I needed to understand that information and I was actually <laughs> doing it for fun because I really knew that it was something that I needed to understand, but it was easier to learn because I had something to apply it to. And I think that's really important when we're, you know, pursuing an education. If you, if you're just learning about everything in theory, it doesn't really make any sense and you don't, honestly don't retain a lot of it. But as I was researching on the side and really was interested in health and there were a lot of passions and things that I was curious about, it was only natural for me to like keep coming across certain terms or certain concepts in biology or you know cellular biology or chemistry and I didn't really understand them and so that's where I would say, I'm not understanding this so I'm gonna go learn it really quick and then come back to this so I can understand the context of this more, if that makes sense. So there's nothing stopping you <laughs> from learning concepts that are outside of your degree. I think a lot of people need to understand that. So my undergrad was actually in business but I did many many college level classes of um, science so biology chemistry all that kind of stuff and that really helped me moving forward really figure out okay what gaps did I now need to fill in my education? What did I need to learn? I really needed some type of structure to be able to help people. So I was interested in pursuing a master's degree, but I also really wanted to get going and start helping people. And I needed a certification to do that or some type of you know nutritionist program to do that. And so that's when I actually decided to become a certified nutritionist consultant. And um, at the same time, I actually pursued a, an FDNP certification, so Functional Diagnostic Nutrition nutrition practitioner uh, certification. Around that same time, I was also really interested in learning some more coaching st skills. So I also took a health coaching certification because I knew that, you know, part of working one-on-one -on -one with people is not just about having knowledge, but it's also being a people person and being a really strong coach, being able to listen and actually being able to coach people. Because it's one thing to tell people what they need to do, <laughs> but it's another thing to actually help them do it and help them make those changes. That's a completely non-health job and so I kind of got this mod podge or this enough certifications to help me start working with people now if I was to go back and do it again I would do things a little bit differently and because I know what I know now and I have kind of landed in a certain trajectory and I've had a certain trajectory in my career I would have actually preferred to go through um, the NTA or become an NTP nutritional therapy association um, just because they have much more of an animal-based, well-rounded approach that's really founded or rooted in Weston A. Price. And I know that I don't agree with everything, but there's really no perfect program or perfect certification out there. And so since my career started, I've actually looked into their curriculum and looked into what it takes to become an NTP and what type of resources you're required to read. And I've actually read all of the resources that they're required to read. So I've actually read and studied them on my own. But um, if I was going to do it again, I'd probably become an NTP. I'd still take Functional Diagnostic Nutrition or FDN. If you're interested in that and you guys want a, a coupon for taking that certification, let me know in the comments below and we can actually add it to the description box. But yeah, I would still take functional diagnostic nutrition. It was a great kind of supplement to becoming a nutritionist. And then, you know, would I take 
IIN's health coaching certification again. I don't know. I did learn a lot of valuable coaching skills. I did like that they prepared you not just with like some well-rounded health information, but also more like really placed a lot of emphasis on coaching skills. Um, do I think it's necessary? No. Um, was it helpful? Yeah, definitely for me at the time, um, giving me some confidence to get started. So, you know, looking back now, I can definitely say like, there are things I would do differently. And if I was gonna do it again, I would do it differently. But the most important thing I did was I did what I needed to do to get started. That was the most important thing because I think a lot of people think like, oh, I need all this education or I need all these things. I need to know all these things before I get started. And that's just not the case. Your education is your foundation, but at some point you do need to start your career. And as long as you've decided on what we talked about earlier, which is becoming a student of the human body, being a lifelong learner, being a lifelong student, you're gonna be okay. And you're gonna find a lot of things that you become curious about. You're gonna find a lot of things that you maybe don't understand. And you need to tell your clients like, hey, you know what, I don't know that, so I'm gonna get back to you. Or hey, you know what, that's not my expertise, so I'm gonna refer you to this person. Or whatever it might be, but you're going to have to learn along the way. That's just the nature of all careers, but it's definitely the nature of this career. But the biggest thing is you wanna build a strong, solid foundation that can springboard you into what you need to be doing next. So that is my first main tip, is just get started. You have to do something that's gonna give you some type of structure to help people and give you a scope of practice and whatever you decide, that is where you can get started. Then the second thing you have to know is running a business requires you to wear many hats. So a lot of people really, really focus in on like, oh, I need to know all this stuff for health, but actually you need to remember that that's just actually one aspect of your career if you really do wanna start a business. Now, there are many people like myself that have already started businesses or are in a, like a more mature place of business that want to hire people like myself. <laughs> who maybe those people don't want to run their own business, but they're still really passionate about what they do and they can focus in on just the health stuff and have the business stuff taken care of by a boss or a CEO. And that's really important too. You just have to kind of decide what you want in life and go from there. If you want to actually run a business and start a business, you have to understand that if you're starting something from nothing, it takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of patience, it takes a lot of consistency, it takes a lot of learning it takes a lot of failing or just falling down and getting back up and trying again a different way it takes a lot and you have to be in the headspace of just doing that and and taking the time that it needs to do that or you're gonna feel like you're a failure when in reality creating something big just takes time and it takes a lot of work and energy and you're gonna have to juggle a lot of different things not just working with people or doing the health stuff but also the social media, the marketing, the um, customer service, the billing, the setting up all of any type of tech, you know, and I can go on and on and on, but usually you have to do that all yourself at the beginning unless you have a ton of money to spend to pay other people to do that for you. So piggybacking off of that, my tip, my third tip is going to be reverse engineer your life. So instead of saying like, I need to do this, 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 you should say, you know, where do I see myself in five years? What, and not just like, where do I want to be? What accomplishments do I want to have? But actually, what do I want to feel? What type of lifestyle do I want to live? What time of time do I want in my day? You know, what type of financial freedom do I want? Because the more money you make, the more problems you have. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So it's really important to understand that you need to realistically reverse engineer the type of life you want to have in five years and make decisions now and each day that are going to get you one step closer to that goal. And I'm not talking about goals like, I want to have 150,000 followers on social media, or I want to have a big business, or I want to make a million dollars. Those things can be goals, I guess. But at the end of the day, it's more, it should be more about what type of life you want to have and what you want to feel in that life. So more like, I want to work from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. I want to spend this amount of time per week working. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want, you know, I want to have 
the ability to spend this amount of time with my kids and this amount of time with my family or whatever it might be. And then you're going to actually want to make decisions that are going to get you closer to that rather than just make decisions that are going to get you a more successful business. Because I promise you, if you do that, you're just going to really not be happy with the outcome. You could be left with this super successful business or not so successful business and it's going to just, your happiness is going to be completely tied to that. So just make sure that you're working towards more of a lifestyle than some type of financial goal. And I wish somebody would have told me this early on in my career because I had all these just crazy goals in my head that, uh, and because I am a goal setter and a go-getter, um, I was going to reach those goals regardless. And nobody had told me that you can reach your goals and have to sacrifice so much along the way that by the time you reach your goals, you're a shell of a human being and you don't actually have the life that you wanted. So just remember there are way more important things than reaching specific types of like business goals. And it's more important to actually create a life holistically <laughs> That includes your free time, that includes your mental health, that includes your physical health, your exercise routine, all those things, and make sure you don't sacrifice those things along the way or do your best to not sacrifice them along the way. The fourth thing that I want to remind you is coaching people and teaching people is actually a people-based business. So it's very important for you to learn that you have to meet people where, you're, where they are at and it does take a lot of compassion, but it's also a very energy-sucking type of career that you have to be very, very, very firm about boundaries. So I'm just going to remind you here and now, if you're interested in a health-related field, especially one where you're running your own business, you're doing any type of nutrition or training or uh, education like I do, it's so, so important when you're dealing with the general public to have very, very strong boundaries to protect yourself and your energy. Because if you want to be able to become a lifelong learner and become a student, you you have to have your energy cup full. It cannot be constantly empty or you're going to have no energy to research anything. You're going to have no energy to want to learn. You're just going to want to curl up in a ball and watch Netflix. And so it's so important to remember that this is a people-based business. You need to like people. You need to have compassion for people. You need to be willing to meet people where they're at and not just continually throw them information that just goes over their head. You want to always keep them in mind, but at the same time, you want to have such strong boundaries where you come from first and you make sure that you're protecting yourself at all costs. The fifth tip that I'd give you is treat yourself as your first client. So it's really good practice to have on the job training. And maybe you're still, you know, deciding on a certification, taking your certification, you know, getting some more education, building a strong foundation like we talked about, but you're like, I want to start working with people. I want to start learning. Treat yourself like your first client and get into the habit of becoming a student and a lifelong learner. If something pops up that you don't understand, instead of saying like, I don't know why that happened, figure it out. Go to the library, start ordering books on Amazon, start reading research articles, figure it out. That is how you learn. And I was my first client. I taught myself so much. Anything, anything happened to me. Anytime I got a diagnosis, anytime I got lab work back, I made sure that I would spend weeks upon weeks understanding every single line of that and that I had more knowledge eventually than the person that was telling me that I was getting that diagnosis or the person that was handing me those lab results. I was fully prepared to learn as much as I possibly could. And remember that research comes full circle. So you do often do the best you can to edu educate yourself on some topic, a certain topic. You do as much research as you can and you come to a, an understanding. But you also need to not close the book on that topic. So remember that research comes full circle. And there might be something that you learned two years ago from an experience with yourself, for example, and then all of a sudden you read a research article or new research comes out and it completely concludes the hypothesis you had or the theory you had about a certain thing two years ago, it finally comes to a conclusion or you're finally validated in, you know what, I had observed this, 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 this was my theory and now it's starting to make a lot of sense. So just remember, like, don't be super hard on yourself when I say you're being, you're a student, you're a lifelong learner. If you don't completely and 100% 
understand everything. Welcome to science. You know, no one ever completely, there's never a conclusion. It's always an open book because the story is always being written and always being edited. And this is really important to understand because you do the best you can with the information and the education and the time you have at the moment. And later, it might be a little bit different. So just remember to have some trust and trust the process that as long as you are keeping your ego out of the way, you don't have your pride in the way, and you truly are coming to the body very humbly. You come to um, science very humbly, understanding that you're no, you know very little. Even though if you you know if you ever get to this place where you feel like you just know a lot about something, then you probably <laughs> um, have not checked your ego or your pride at the door. Always come humbly as a student to the body and to science, and you will always be a lifelong learner. And that is very important when applying it to yourself. But treat yourself like your first client because the best way to learn is through experimentation and the best way to start doing that is with you. And you can start that right now. <laughs> That's not something that you need to wait to do. So treat yourself like your first client and it's important to remember to hone all your skills. It's not just about the health. It's also about helping people pinpoint what they're feeling. It's also about being a very good listener, which you can really practice listening to your body, right? Listening to yourself, listening to what's coming out of your mouth, what's coming out of your heart, what feelings are coming up, tracking your cycles and tracking your patterns. There's so many things that you can do to first become a student of yourself and your own body. And that is really a, a very foundational part of helping other people and having compassion for other people is going through it yourself in some way, shape or form first. And then remember, it also gives you such a compelling story because no one can be me and that's my power, but no one can be you and that's your power. And remember that there will be a time and a place in your business where you are going to be talking to people that were in your shoes right now now. And you have to remember, how did you feel when you felt that way? What were your biggest struggles? What did you need to overcome? What did you need to know? Because your whole business is going to be providing the you you are now in two years with what you need to know, right? You're going to be a trailblazer in that way. You're going to figure it out. You're going to come to your own conclusions and you're going to figure your own problems out. But then in two years from now, there's going to be someone who's exactly in your shoes that needs you to guide them to where you got. So remember that it's very, that is a very important part of the process. And the last thing that I want to remind you is don't copy other people. Be a trailblazer and trust your gut. You are enough and you can do it. And I don't mean it, I, I don't mean be a trailblazer in the sense of like, you're going to set out and you're like, I'm going to be a trailblazer, you know, for my job. My job's going to be being a trailblazer. Like I did not set out doing that. I just set out remembering that the most important thing was meeting people where they're, they were at, providing them tons and tons of value, helping them truly understand what they needed to know, what I thought that they needed to know, and sharing that in a very transparent, in a very non-fake way, in a very vulnerable and just real way. And I thought that that was the most important. It wasn't ever about me. It's always going to be about them or you, right? And so that's where my coaching skills, my listening skills really came in handy. It's so important to listen to your audience. It's so important to listen to your clients and, and your customers. And it doesn't matter if you have two or 2000. That's really important because I think a lot of people think that, well, I'm not important enough to do this, or I don't have the amount of followers that I need to do X, Y, Z thing. I want you to live your life like you have 2 million followers. I want you to start your career as if you had 20,000 eyeballs on you right away. Because if you if you make decisions with that in mind, knowing that one day you will have that type of audience or you will have the, that type of eyeballs on you, you will make different decisions. But that really goes back to just because what somebody else is doing looks like it's working for them doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And I see this happening a lot, especially in my industry, where instead of people being their own, there's so much opportunity in my specific niche, right? There's so many people in the pro-metabolic space that 
that need support on different topics like endometriosis, they need men's health, they need menopause, they need gut health, they need all of these things, right? And nobody's doing it. Everybody's copying each other. And I find it very fascinating that instead of people kind of creating their own niche or becoming a trailblazer in their own right, everyone feels like because a few of us started out doing it one way and we were really successful doing it that way, that the only way to be successful is to follow the way that the people that kind of started this niche are doing it. And that's just not the case. The reason that this niche was started in the first place was because somebody did it, I did it, a few others did it in a way that nobody was doing it before. And so that's just something really important to remember. Just because no one's doing it doesn't mean it's not gonna work and doesn't mean it's not important. It might actually be the thing that people are craving. So just remember that copying someone else or comparing yourself to somebody else might actually hold you back instead of propel you forward. So just as a reminder, what are those six things that I want you to remember? Number one, education isn't everything. Pick a direction, go in that direction and start helping people. Number two, running a business requires wearing many hats. Make sure you become a student of other things besides just health because you're gonna need it. Number three, reverse engineer your life. Look five years from now, figure out what type of lifestyle you want, how you wanna spend your time, what things are important to you and reverse engineer that. Make choices now that are gonna get you there. Number four, remember that coaching and teaching is a people-based business and it's gonna require you being able to listen and work with people. Number five, it's really important to treat yourself as your first client and you can start that right now. And the last tip, number six, was don't copy other people. Become a trailblazer in your own right and show up to make waves by being yourself and teaching value and teaching people things that you wish you would have known when you were in their shoes. If you guys like these types of tips or you want more tips on personal development, I've had a decade plus of trying to develop my business skills and my nutrition skills and just my <laughs> general life skills. Um, and I have a lot of things that really worked for me and a lot of things that like I feel like people say are helpful or that are not helpful so if you guys like information like this let me know in the comments below um, I, I'm always hesitant to like <laughs> go in a different direction or talk about things that are not necessarily nutrition related or metabolism related so I'm always curious to hear your thoughts and remember that you know you're, you're allowed to think outside the box so my course fully nourished was really born out of a need for there to be a hundred me's. I was seeing so many clients a month, almost 40, and I was, I had a 12 month waiting list. So I had gotten myself to a place in my career where I was working incredibly long hours. It was very tough for me to manage wearing all of my hats. And I was having a hard time sticking to my rule of being a lifelong learner and a lifelong student. I had become kind of a little bit stagnant in my career because I felt like I was helping the same person over and over and over again. And we were implementing the same things over and over and over again. And so that is really what propelled me to wanting to do an online course because I was able to then teach once, teach what I was teaching my clients over and over and over again one time and sell it for so much less than someone would pay by working with me for six to 12 sessions, right? Because I could never teach what I taught in Fully Nourished in one session. It would be six sessions or 12 sessions before people had that aha moment and got it. And so that was energy draining for me, but it was also really frustrating for them. So by putting a lot of that information in an online course, it allowed me to help thousands of women, way more women than I ever could have in a one-on-one -on -one format, and also really protect myself and protect my energy and create a lot stronger boundaries. And so that's why I created Fully Nourished. I believe wholeheartedly in it. Obviously, when you build a course, you can't teach everything in one course. And so that's really important to know. There are nuances to working one-on-one -on -one with someone, benefits to working one-on-one, -on -one, but sometimes in business you have to say, what's gonna benefit people the most by benefiting me the most? And in that, I had to protect my energy, I had to protect my time, I had to protect the things that were most important to me, which was staying a lifelong learner, 
taking care of myself and having, you know, having time to take care of myself and not be a hypocrite. And also being able to help lay a foundation for many women in a format that still allowed me to do those things. And so that is why I created Fully Nourished and put it in an online course format. There are going to be many things that come out of my business that might be in a different format from that. We have lots of things in the works, but doing that has provided me a lot more freedom of time to figure out where my boundaries are, what I want to spend my time doing the most, what do I actually enjoy most in my business, what do I want to contract out, and it really has allowed me to become a bit better business owner. So I just want to remind you guys that sometimes thinking outside the box and doing things in a way that maybe other people aren't doing it is okay. It's totally okay. And it might actually make you better at your career. So my hope is that this gave you tons of information that you need to kind of get started, remembering that don't put so much weight on just the education that you forget that your education is just a foundation to get started and it's gonna actually just be the beginning <laughs> chapter of many chapters of your life and your career. And if you guys like this information, let me know below. See you next week.